Today's episode begins on an average day on an author blocks. A rather infamous statement. Um, that's uh, why, because uh, my brain no where- Oh, uh, uh, no. N- absolutely not. Do not uh, approach me. Uh, Do not approach me. Do not. I, w- I will thwack you. Uh, <laughs> I will thwack you uh, in your feathery behind. Be gone. Uh, Come and do- uh, uh, yeah. I don't- I- Onk. Onk. Hi, Kaza. Onk. 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 They're not cute, Kaza. They're not. You can't hear the music at all. Right, me. So do you- Oh, you do have a box. I was like, did you finally get a goat horn? Or are you just very stealthy with that box? And I think that what it is is that your goose body is so fat. Excuse you. Uh, Your goose uh, body is so uh, fat that uh, it hides it. Uh, <laughs> How are you honking so rapidly? Cease. Uh, I'm using my voice. Uh, you are so very good at make at broken it, recording. It hurts for throat. <laughs> uh, Rude. <laughs> You've done well, Rogue, to have your desert so far away. They don't know how to get there. We would have had a very goosey stream if I had an elytra currently. Honkety honk honk. just go up. It is I, the tree goose. Oh, tree goose. Do you come this way to seek my wisdom? Yes. Oh, what so wisdom do you have? We see if them all the time. If a pond does not have water in it, then it is not a pond. This is good wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Come back daily. Did you hear about for the insightful pond? wisdom. Oh did yes. You hear, did you hear about the pond that flew away with the geese? I have heard tell of such a thing. No, no, no. Come here. Let me tell you about the pond down in Georgia. Come, come here. Let me come here, little goslings. Gosling. Yes. I'm calling <laughs> Is what baby geese are called. They are called goslings. Well, I'm not a baby goose. <laughs> Mmm, debatable. I'm the tree goose of wisdom. Way down, Georgia, there was a freak freeze over. It froze so quick, nobody saw it coming. Doesn't happen very often. It's usually quite warm in Georgia. But these these geese, they had landed in this pond, and it froze over so quick oh, no. that they didn't have time to get out of the pond. They, they spooked and they flew away. And oh, they dear. took that pond with them. Oh no! <laughs> they took that pond with them, and from I I hear that pond's over in Alabama to this day. Mm-hmm. Fantastic! Oh my! Yes. My. yes. This is the tale of the pond that the geese ton took with them. That is peak goose determination. Scooch gooch. Thank you. Uh, scooch gooch. Uh. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you know we are quite large geese, aren't we? <laughs> we are quite large. <laughs> Average goose on an awful blocks. You know, normal geese, they fly to unorthodox blocks, and as soon as they land, as soon as their, their webbed feet touch the unorthodox block soil, they grow an extra meter. Oh, that's what happens. Okay, that makes um, total sense. Well, actually, we could probably work out how tall an unorthodox block goose is. So a Minecraft player is two meters tall if a block is one meter tall. And then how many players tall a uh, goose? Um, it's two, three, and a half. <laughs> three and a half, so that's... If you wanted to do some really good science, go get some snow blocks and some snow layers. But on <laughs> estimate, a goose is seven meters tall, which is quite frankly terrifying. The pond is quite deep. I'm a fish. So, blub blub. Not place. Oh yes, fish. That sounds like a custom like model. Fish. Yes, fish. Fish for goose. Good goose fish. Honkity honk. Honk honk honk. <laughs> Can we fit in this tunnel? Yes. We, oh, we actually yes, this can. Go- this tunnel is goose accessible. Yes, it passes a goose test. Fantastic. Yay! What? It's goose o'clock. Hey, yes, goose. goose poker. How many stats do you have for crimson fence gates crafted? Probably not many. <laughs> zero. Well, that was a riveting game of stat poker. Yeah. No, I have zero as well. Well, Goose, it's been nice talking to another Goose, I must say. It's lovely having a Goose chat. I shall go to my home pond. Yes! Doodle Pip! Did you finally get a goat Did you horn? finally get a goat horn? Or... Did you finally get a goat horn? Goat horn? Or goat horn? Or goat horn? Or goat horn? Or goat horn? I need a horn. I really need a horn. 
Ed Ludi Doody Doo there. My name is Jampot Bong. Welcome back to our North Block Season 3. This is episode 11. What has happened to me? I'm swimming in the floor. Fair enough. Oh, now I'm here. Ah. Not having connection issues at all. Oh. Right. Oh, I think this is good now. Hey! Welcome back to Unalpha Blocks, and yes, today I need a goat horn. Now, actually, I already got myself a goat horn. That's how things work. I do it off camera, then tell you about it, then show you the stuff I did on the camera. That makes sense somehow, I'm sure. And yeah, I have a goat horn, but it only took me three. Oh, oh dear. Ah, uh, let me finish this intro. Yeah, I got a goat horn, and it only took me three hours of my life across two separate days, because for some reason, unorthodox blocks do not have goats, and when it does have goats, they're really stubborn. But I could not get around just hauling a jukebox all over the place when I want to honk people. I needed a horn, and I already had a custom texture for it, which is the same as this bow here. <laughs> I actually had two goat horns planned, but I could only get one goat horn, so I just decided uh, I can switch between them if I have enough XP for the custom model data. Because you see, with the fact that Unorthor Blocks has custom goat horn sounds and custom model data, you can basically create super awesome sound items like trumpets or cameras, hint hint. And of course, geese. So yeah, because I love documenting my pain, here is the footage of me going on a three hour long goat horn hunting session across two separate days. Enjoy! I kicked off a long and tedious night by demonstrating camera sounds inside of a jukebox because I was not expecting for this scene to be a voiceover in the end. That's because I actually set off with confidence despite confidence not setting off with me but I did not realise that at the time because of course I didn't. Remember in my episode 7 when I went on a 10 minute long ice searching expedition only 10 minutes in the video even and there was ice right next to me as I went to my music disc farm to get gunpowder to go there? Yes, I realised that that sort of thing can happen so I thought I'd go to my now lucky spot of the music disc farm area and see if I could scout out any goats around some of the colder biomes around there. No luck yet with goats but it's only been about 5 minutes. I fly northeast, and of course the one time I actually find cows in this plain biomes is a time where I don't want to find cows. I've had struggles before on this server with not finding any cows and now it's goats and now there are lots of cows. Urgh. I headed back to the farm to eat an entire flightless bird in one go while dwelling on life. I believe the Americans have a holiday for that. I set off again, past some snowy mountains but still no luck with goats. I'm suddenly goat enemy number one and I still haven't met any yet. Did a nice spot of free cam searching because I'm a dirty, shameless cheat. And I managed to find a big mountain that looked very, very promising in my search. And did it have any goats? No, of course it didn't, but it had this guy here. You know, I don't really think I've ever seen many polar bears in Minecraft. What, what do they do? What, what can you do with a polar bear? Can you play music to a polar bear? Oh my, light just getting down. Oh dear. I had a new problem rapidly rising in front of me. My elytra was very quickly deteriorating and I am stuck in the wilderness very far from home. Still not with any goats yet. Found some more cold high stuff. Any more goats? No. So half an hour into my quest, if you can even call it a quest, I had to head back to the music this farm and do some elytra repairing. And I got distracted trying to do a new thing called a Waystone MLG, which is probably the worst thing you can do if your elytra's about to break, and oh, I'm stuck in the floor, but oh dear. And then something bad happened. I went to the end of camera just to nosy, and I went through the end portal, which puts you back in the last bed you went to. And when I jumped through it, I ended up back in that village in the wilderness with an elytra I didn't get around to repairing in the end, very stuck. 8,000 blocks to fly with a nearly broken elytra and 20 rockets and a chicken. Can I manage that? Probably not. You should watch to find out. Did I manage that? Y yeah, I did. Wasn't as far as I thought it was. I'm home now. Whoa. Down to the skelly grinder to restring my wings. Ow, that's a really bad idea in all the current circumstances of this current quest. I always die when flying down this tunnel, yet I never learn my lesson and I always go straight back to flying down it the next time. Picked some bones. Ate another former war enemy and got stuck under a trapdoor. 
1am that night, and I had a new genius idea of a way to find an ice biome, or just anything snowy. Basically, do you see that over there? It's a hologram. That is my Lightmatica schematic for something I'm building, and it will show up even if it's out of render distance. So I looked on Chunk Base Seed Map, and I found a mountain biome, and I and marked out the coordinates, and using the Lightmatica settings, sent my schematic to those coordinates. So I basically have a compass, or like a waypoint beacon marker, that shows me the way I need to fly. And this would have been genius if I hadn't accidentally based the location of the mountain biome off of the Unorthor Block Season 2 seed. We are in Season 3. I was looking through the Discord in server info and I accidentally put in the Season 2 one, because of course I did. But of course, I wasn't as clever 8 days ago, and I did not realise I had done that, and I spent a while being confused. And a while is, of course, 30 minutes! I spent 30 minutes flicking through Chunk Base and the actual server trying to work out what I did wrong before I realised. The realisation hit me like a charging goat, but that's not really appropriate because I was looking for charging goats at the time and I was sad that I could not find any charging goats. So I gave up. Till the very next day, bum bum, ba da ba dum, a jampa went to a snowy hill and he was looking for goats, did he find any still? No! Bum bum bum! Of course he didn't! <laughs> but then, by a stroke of luck, a goat. But little did Little Jam from eight days ago know, this was somehow still only where the problems began. Goat is useless. Goat is stubborn. Goat is goat. Half an hour later, a goat would still not ram me, and I could not understand why. I'd watched two YouTube videos on the subject, which means I'm now a world-renowned expert on this, yet the goat would not do anything, so I blamed it on the goat, not me. The one goat on an off block season 3, and he's not even cooperative. What's more annoying is that even in the coming minutes after that, he actually did ram me, but there were failed ram attempts, because I was just so amazed by the goat actually ramming at me that I forgot to jump. At this point, my thoughts were very much jumbled between never wanting to see a goat again yet wanting to search every goat on the Nova blocks. I then hid in a box during night time. It's a hotel, shush. I headed to a new mountain out of sheer desperation, and look, another goat. Was he cooperative? No. It had been an hour now, and still nothing. I was feeling drained. I was feeling... I was just feeling goat, but... I wasn't feeling goat because they weren't ramming me and that's the issue and I don't even know what to say at this point it's so uh, goats a whole other hour later I found one in a pillager chest anyway sarcastic voiceover aside this was very exciting because it means I could do what I wanted to do the two things I wanted to do with a goat horn which a lot of this episode will end up focusing on here we go the vital command ha 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 camera wait let's wait for it to cool down so we can hear this again Yay! It's like a camera f Yeah, because it's going to be a camera, I'm going to retexture it to be a camera. There's actually one thing I'm a bit disappointed by here, that when you toot it, like with an actual goat horn, it doesn't move up to near the mouth. I expected that, because it would make the camera look like holding it near my eye when I click it, but I guess that's to be expected, because the mod developers can't guarantee how long a goat horn sound is going to be based on the animation, probably, so it's just to be on the safe side, <laughs> there's no animation with it, which makes sense. Need to get home ASAP so I can give it a custom model. Woohoo! Oh, it's so satisfying to use. Hi, this is Voiceover Jam here again. What's funny is that the goat horn sound was actually had a block radius of 256, so literally anyone in spawn could hear it. And later that day, we realised that might be a bit excessive for a custom camera and other custom sounds, so we changed that in the settings. So now, as I'm recording this voiceover, it's only 10. So that's a bit better. Time to see what I'm calling the Jamra. Ah! It's so cute. It's for Jamra. I love it. Oh, it looks so nice. I'm really proud of the model I made for it. If I put it in the offhand, it goes near my eye. Ah, oh, yes. Ah, oh, the model combined with the sound is so satisfying to use. I love it. Oh, it's a little Jamra. I don't know why I'm finding it. It's so cute. I love my Jamra. Although I'm, I'm of course not going to sell it because yeah, I'm not. I'm not finding more goats. I must never lose this camera, but that's quite a big ask, because I lose my stuff like every Friday. Wait, wait, no, that's a big exaggeration. Daily. I went to photograph spider. Oh. And then I unveiled my second goat horn idea. Huh? <laughs> Huh? 
<laughs> Honk? <laughs> uh -huh. Goose magic. That's awesome. Uh -huh. It's me, Jam, a few days into the future. And relating to the goose horn and the camera, there's actually some other things I want to unveil before we get to the main point of today's episode. Yeah, the main point is quite near the end, and that is... The goose shop I teased at the end of the previous episode. Let's give a sneak peek. Ooh, you've got enough sneak peeks now. Stop. I worked out some cool things you can do with crossbows. Now, I've been very much doing lots of custom model data stuff lately, as made quite apparent in the previous episode. I've discovered some interesting things. It looks like I'm using a camera. Now, the cool thing about custom model data crossbows and bows is that you can use the animation stages in vanilla with them. So look, camera, it flashes, and boop. It's so satisfying. I'm pressing the buttons and then bloop. Now the fact that it shoots arrows when you take a photo could be an issue, but I've combated that with a pun. It's a literal photo shoot. Can we get some stock stock laughing? Stock laughing sound effects in here. Crowd underscore laughter mp3. Come save me here, bud. <laughs> then I thought, what else of current relevance can I use funky animation stages for? Goosebow, watch this. What? And if you look at it from first person, what? It's like the goose is screaming and he just shoots arrows out of his beak. It's amazing. What? If you're watching the hot bar as well, he's just going, bah! That's my best impression of an angry goose shooting arrows at you. And then I thought, what if it was a crossbow? Goose crossbow. Goose crossbow! It's a supercharged goose. Look at it, there's some Zed fighting at the top part. It's amazing. So now I'm going to go put the finishing touches to the build I'm going to unveil at the end of this episode. It is a big old goose shop. Oh, 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 there's actually someone there. Hello, Bex, with a door. A spruce door on her shoulder. That's a distraction. Anyway, so, goose shop. This is a goose shop I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. It's a giant stone monolith to the geese, which has been sort of half steampunked and half cyberpunked. We've got a big sign that might be hard to tell, but it says goose going down like that. We've got two geese at the entrance. We've got some windows, and of course we've got the big goose head with a beak. I'm very proud of my texturing here, actually. I never thought I'd ever be using cracked stone bricks, but they work as a block between stone and tough, actually. So we come over here and pass the DeLorean. Well, we'll go to the goose chair. We had a great time for the goose chair. We've actually already been to the goose chair, I believe, but time and stuff, it's confusing. Really confusing. Hmm. We've got these goose guards here. Ugh, I wish custom models in Minecraft didn't do that thing where they disappear when you look to the side. Mm, stop doing that, geese. Uh, anyway. Now, there's actually two ways you can get to the top. And because I'm a minor inconvenience, none of them are easy. <laughs> yeah, that's my branding now. I'm a minor inconvenience. My slogan, jump up on, colon, a minor inconvenience. Minor inconvenience. Get it, because Minecraft, mining, humour! But we love being a minor inconvenience around here. We have a very thin elytra landing pad up here, and we have a very long and tedious scaffolding lift. But that's what they think, because I found a way to make it more entertaining, on the first ride up, at least. So we come up here. Long climb, right? Here are some goose facts to entertain you on the ascent. Now... People from an alpha blocks might be watching this, and if I read the goose facts now, that will spoil it for them. They want to read the goose facts themselves, of really interesting goose facts. So I'm just going to read the first. Geese have fantastically sharp eyesight. True. They see you when you're sleeping. They know when you're awake. They know if you've been <laughs> bad or good. So be goose for goodness sake. It's Christmas now. Great. Enjoy the shop. You could have just flown up here, you realise, just rubbing it in people's faces. And then we get up here to the inside of the goose shop. So the actual shop part is just some building that's just been dunked on top of a goose monolith and is somehow staying upright by goose magic. Oh yeah, this guy. We decided we liked him and his name is now Goosefer. He's a real character, that Goosefer. 
There's a lot to take in as you walk in. These are display models. This shows every goose we've got so far. We've got the Grey Lag Geese, which you can get for two diamonds. Canada Goose for two diamonds. Free for Canadians. Yeah, Canadians get them free. So this is your call to become Canadian. Donut Goose, of course, that's a private goose for J Donut. Future Goose, Future Goose, Future Goose. Disclaimer. We've got chairs you can't actually get onto. Over here, we are selling the Goose Hats. So you can have one of these on your head for one diamond per hat. Let's put that back. Over here we are selling the goose flower pots, those ones that I gave Iondus in the last episode. I think that was the last episode, yes it was. Then we're selling the individual geese for two diamonds of course, you can get Canada geese. Free for Canadians. Real out geese which are not free for Canadians. But then, over here, by the unintentional flezzies. <laughs> This is Builder Goose. You can order your very own custom goose. Welcome to Builder Goose, where you can order your very own custom goose on the Unlawful Lot server. Seen those grey geese running amok? Think of a grey geese I saw last season. Are you perhaps wishing you had your own more stylish goose? Well now, with a simple price of 10 diamondos, you can! Simply rename the 10 diamonds to your name, anvil supplied, and toss them into the hopper. Then ping Jam on Discord in the hashtag build a goose thread in hashtag shops, say that you have paid. This is the important part because it's also where you write your custom goose order. Your custom goose can be anything you please as long as it is within the realms of possibility. Make it unique. Make it crazy. Make it a self portrait. Just do whatever. I don't care. I just want to make more custom models. What models? I forgot how to say models then. Though all this can basically be done through that one Discord message, I'd be- Oh, this is fourth wall breaking stuff. <laughs> Once you have paid and submitted your order, Jam will make the goose and it will be on the server in the nearest resource pack update every other Saturday. So that's in three days, I think. Once it is on the server, Jam will ping you to let you know and leave it at your mailbox in the post office below this shop. So yeah. Geese. And, most excitingly, since I built this and recorded this, which has been a few hours, we already have two orders. Ten diamonds from Spider Hearts, who wants a self-portrait goose, a Spider Hearts goose. Ten diamonds from Draken, who ordered a swan. Now, you see, I can't really complain about this, because, I mean, there's always the argument that swans are similar, and I say that it can be anything. And if a CEO goose in a pond far away who kind of owns my company complains, we can just make up an elaborate story about evolution and identity crisis, the two main driving forces of nature. So, yeah, this is a goose shop. It's awesome. In the next episode, we will be making those custom geese for Spider and Draken. Um, <laughs> I'm going to time lapse myself making a model in Blockbench. That's not what you typically get in a Minecraft SMP video, but hey. Now I'm actually going to end off this episode by doing something immeasurably cool. I get to showcase fan art! Yep, fan art for a YouTube with 138 subscribers. It is awesome. So basically, we have our own Unorther Blocks fan Discord called the Unorther Zone, which is always linked in the description. And you can join if you want to hang out with us Unorther Blocks members, share some stuff with us, talk about our videos, and just have a good time. And recently, there's been some good activity in the Unorther Zone in form of fan art. So I want to show this super amazing art of me with a goose drawn by Nihilite. I really hope I pronounced your name right there. And it is fantastic. I am so grateful for this. I smile so hard whenever I look at this. It's awesome. We've been getting fan art on an author blocks. It's fantastic. Look at this. It's me with my jam jumper. It looking so cool. And there's a goose. I'm holding it goose like i think the idea was it's like those people who hold dangerous birds on their arms like owls or hawks or eagles except it's a goose so yeah absolutely incredible job by nihilite here again hope i pronounced your name right their instagram is linked in the description if you want to check out some of their fantastic art it's awesome this is the coolest way i've ever ended an unorthodox blocks video Woo! and so that's the end of the video of course toodle pip